Hi, everybody. Um, Misia Denea, owner and founder of Hatha Holistic Integrative Wellness. And I have Cecilia here today of East Bay Ayurveda. Ayurveda. And I'm in Cecilia's office in Emeryville right now. And it's really cool. I have some kind of like lung sinus stuff because of like the smoke from the wildfires and the um, residual smoke in the wildfires. I guess I'm really sensitive to it. And she just gave me, what are the, what is the stuff called that I, um, the little granules? I just had it happened to have some Boshadi Batagam. And so and just gave her a little bit to kind of help uh, soothe her throat a little bit. She had a little cough with that. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. I've been finding a dry cough and like a, the sore throat's gone. I've been, doing the ginger and the garlic and stuff, but whatever you just gave me helped quite a bit. And now I have some tea. Yay. So as you all know, um, I have completed a summer program. I launched an inaugural intro to Hatha Yoga program this summer that went very well. And um, I'm going to do something similar in the fall, but I'll have some guests uh, instructors with me this time. So it won't just be me. We'll have an Ayurveda module, which I'm very excited about because Ayurveda and yoga go together quite, you know, they're, they're sister sciences. And then I'll have a chiropractor also who will be involved and I'll be interviewing him later. Um, so Cecilia, we are getting close to, um, the fall and the in Ayurveda, there's uh, kind of characteristics of the fall, and from what I understand, it's Vata V A T A. And could you just like share with me what yes. the Vata season is and what mm -hmm. we can expect from that time of the year? So in Ayurveda, we have um, different doshas that can also represent different seasons. So right now we're leaving the Pitta season, the summer season, and we're going to be moving into the Vata season. And this Vata season has much different qualities in the summertime. So we're going to be moving into like more of a dry, light, rough, cool type qualities. And so as these qualities are changing in nature, inevitably we're going to be affected by that. And also then we change with nature at the same time. So some of the self-care things that we can be doing as we're moving in to this time is really paying attention to the inputs that we're putting into our body. We have four inputs through our food through our water, through um, our perception, and through our breath. So luckily we have a really great yoga teacher here to help with learning some breath exercises and helping, and that really helps with our perception when we can breathe really properly and know how to get the right amount of prana in through the breath. Um, that can be really helpful for our perception. But understanding how, what kind of food and um and liquids to put into our body at this time of year is um, something that we can definitely do um, for ourselves and it's very empowering. So there's um, definitely a specific type of diet for Vata season that has to do with rejuvenation. So we want to really make sure that we're giving our body a lot of rejuvenation um, during this time period. It's really great for our joints. Um, it's really great for the cartilage in the body. And um, we want to focus on more warm foods. So we're going to be kind of switching from um, cooler type spices and foods into more warming foods. So naturally in the season, we kind of tend to want to have more stews. Um, we can start having some more light broths at this time, some soups, because you want to keep our immune system up. So, you know, adding a couple more spices to your food um, could also be really helpful at this time as we're moving into the season. People are starting to get a little bit of runny noses and things, so we want to build up our <laughs> immune system. Um, okay, already. Yeah, <laughs> and we want to take it easy. We want to not push too hard um, either because that's a season we want to be very nurturing to ourselves. So there's a lot of... Um, Good spices that you can have, like cumin, coriander, and fennel at this time, or some basic spices. Adding a little more ginger to your cooking can also be really great. Um, it helps to kindle Agni. Um, paying attention to what What's kind of... Agni? Oh, Agni. <laughs> <laughs> so Agni, um, this is our digestive fire. And it's the, it's the heat in our body. It's the metabolic force in our body to help transform and assimilate our nutrients. So this is not only in our um, in our stomach, which is one of the main ones, but it's also in some of our organs, like the liver and the spleen, and um, 
it's also in all of the tissues of our body. So we have all these different tissues and they all need that transformative quality. So we want to make sure that we're keeping our Agni in a good state and supporting it. And um, a couple ways to do that would be to make sure you're having routine meals making sure you're having breakfast, lunch, and dinner mm. at the same time. So every day, mm. <laughs> so that you're on this cyclical rhythm. Wow. So that that's you're, a nice practice. <laughs> yes, so that you're in rhythm with nature, because ba- nature's based in rhythms. Our bodies are based in rhythms, our cardiac rhythm, our respiratory rhythm. We have our rhythms of season. So we, in order to be in flow with nature, we also need to be in flow with our meals and what we're, how we're nourishing ourselves. So Agni responds really well to that, and so does the Vata season. As we're going into that routine, it's very important. Um, Also, Agni does really good with ginger. Ginger tea is nice to sip on with your meals um, because it'll help to get all the nutrients from your food, and you want to make sure you're getting as much nutrients as one of those inputs that we're um, able to do ourselves. And as well as um, ghee, Mm -hmm. culture ghee specifically, Um, with culture ghee, you really um, get the most nutrients from your food, but you're also kindling your agni. There are some other oils that are also good for the diet, but this is the one that's the most um, digestible and not heavy for your digestion. So maybe experimenting with doing a saute of vegetables or adding a little bit um, into your soup, and you'll They'll say, you know, probably say it tastes really, really good because ghee is naturally um, very tasty. So um, those are some simple tips that you can start to do to make sure your Agni is good, which is going to support your immune system and start to get you ready to go into the Vata season and with a little bit more strength as well. Yeah, and, you know, this time of the year, people are... <clears throat> you know, traveling more. So like I, and I also traveled a little bit now. So I think that's why I also have a little sick on my throat, but people are getting on planes, trains, so forth, Ubers, and, you know, doing all these things where there's a lot of germs, where there's a lot of like, you know, activity. And I think it's nice when you have your practice of um, finding out what works for you as far as like how you can combat some of the sniffles and some of the things that come up when the seasons change. Um, do you have a place that you like to get your ghee from or are you at that point where you make it yourself? Um, well, for people who do want to make themselves or, or know how to make it, uh, making sure you buy a cultured butter um, at the store. You can go to Brickley Bowl or Whole Foods, um, Sprouts, um, all of those stores and maybe some other ones as well. Um, do you have a cultured butter if you want to make it? Um, I don't promote any brands, but um, mm-hmm. but looking for a ghee that comes from a cultured butter. Because if it doesn't, then you're not going to really be able to get the benefit from it. It's going to be more clogging for your system. So you want to double check to make sure that it, it is cultured. Perfect. Very important. Okay, so... Um... Uh, as you all know, the uh, next program that I'll be offering will be at the Working Body in downtown Oakland, very close to Lake Merritt, and it begins in about a month, September 24th, and the early bird um, discount is still available. Uh, uh, Cecilia will be there, and we'll have Dr. Khalid uh, Cheney, who's a chiropractor. Also, he'll be, he'll be talking a lot about back care, which is really important, and I figured um, when the 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 weather gets a little bit cooler for me i feel the aches and pains more i don't feel it as much in the summertime when it's warmer but i'm excited about that and um you know can i add one more thing about vata so vata is a season but you know there's going to be a like a handful of students taking the course and um there people have they can have a vata constitution um and there's also pitta and kapha kapha does it matter? Like, is there a way to streamline how to be healthy during the Vata season or does it, would it be more specific and would somebody have to work with you privately to kind of understand how to be healthy during this, this time of the year? Well, um, I believe that there are some fundamental Ayurvedic concepts that benefit all of us. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to be going over those in, um, in the workshop, but, um, For more specific um, individual health concerns, sometimes having a full consultation can be the best because then it's very individualized for you Mm -hmm. because 
Ayurveda isn't a general, um, it's, it's not a, a system that's a trend, it's an ancient system. And so we really want to focus on what's best for you, for your diet, for your lifestyle based on your health conditions. So um, then we can do the appropriate tweaks to those things, um, as well as maybe offer some herbal recommendations um, to support you more fully. But in this workshop, we will be speaking in a more general sense that um, does serve everybody because just learning some basic Ayurvedic concepts, um, there you know, are pretty simple concepts. But sometimes when we when we actually can experience them and embody them, we'll start to really feel the benefit of them. And so I'm really excited to be able to share some of these because. Sometimes we get kind of bombarded by all of these, all this different information. Everybody wants to help us, you know, so, um, and it comes from all different places and, you know, there's some good intentions behind it, but we want to make sure that we are flowing with nature and that we're not working, um, we're not just doing kind of trends, but we're working with ancient systems that are going to be able to support us in a more holistic way and it can really address specific issues as well. So um, I hope to be of service and be able to, to help, to help with that in this workshop. Most definitely. And if people did want to work with you privately, I want to give them a little tour after you share your information. Okay. Where, where can they find you online and all that? Yeah, so I'm, um, I'm East Bay Ayurveda, so you can find my website um, there. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook as well. Um, so there's different ways to contact me. Um, and my office is here in Emeryville. I'm part of the Emeryville Health and Wellness Center. And so we have different practitioners here, but I have my office here. And um, yeah. Okay, so I'm going <laughs> to give you all a little tour. It's really cute in here. So I just hold it like this. Okay. So oh, I do have to sit on here. 